not away from thy presence. And take not thy Holy Spirit from me. You know? So without the Holy Spirit, how can you be the presence of the Most High? Because it's the Spirit of the Most High. We started with that, first and foremost. Divine in Isaiah 11, chapter, the second verse. So these things that the Holy Spirit brings forth, you would not have them if you don't have the Holy Spirit. Listen. That's why he said, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. He said, don't, please don't take the Holy Spirit from me because it can leave you. Look at, uh, for the book of Luke. So if you're not, if you, if, if you dismiss from the presence of the Most High, you're not going to have the Holy Spirit. That's the Spirit of the Most High. Look at uh, Luke 11 chapter. In verse 13. It says, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, they're evil, but they still know how to give good gifts to their children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? See? It's a gift. It's a gift, people. It's not something that you can just look at and say, I have it. It's a gift. That's why everybody don't have it. So he saved on, remember what he said in uh, John, the uh, John 14, 16, it says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. See? And verse 26, it says, this John 14 chapter still, it says, But the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, which whom the Father will send, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, to your mind what whatsoever I have said unto you. See? So verse John 15, 26 again. But when the comforter is come, when whom I will send unto you from the Father. My second say, I'm gonna send the comfort, I'm gonna send the Holy Spirit, I'm gonna send the Spirit of truth to you from the Father. You understand? From the Father. To a Mashiach Yahushua, to us, through the Holy Spirit. Even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. Because he's getting it, his information from a Mashiach Yahushua, who's getting his information from the Most High. In order. So now, real quick, let's go to Acts, the second chapter, when it came. But before that, he told them in Acts 1 and 6, they asked him a question. When they therefore would come together, they asked of him after he died, rose on the third day, walked to the earth for 40 days. They asked of him, saying, Amashiach, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So that you know the kingdom is coming to Israel. Point blank, the Israelites. The kingdom of heaven is coming to the Israelites. Because they asked, will you restore the kingdom to Israel? Should we, man, you've been here 40 days, man. A mutton, 20 days. Come on. You ready to come? The judge will make wars we just read in Revelation 19 11? <laughs> they asked them. They didn't know anything about that because it hadn't been written yet. But other prophecies of the Old Testament, you can, you can go there and vouch for it. That he's coming. The judge will make war. 
with the vengeance of the Most High. So they know about that. They know that the kingdom come back to Israel. Listen to what he said. Verse 7, And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Hear that? The times and the seasons which the Most High is the only one that knows because he's put it in his own power, the power of the Most High. You understand? That's why he said in... Uh, I believe Matthew, go to Matthew the 24th chapter. Nobody fool you now. Matthew 24 and 36. Say, but of that day and hour know of no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. Mark that in the book. So you know. So nobody gonna tell you that, hey, it's happening this day, that day. That's why he told them in Acts 1 and 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons. Which the Father, the Most High Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jesus, have put in His own power. The Most High, the only one know. This verse eight. But ye shall receive power, that spiritual power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You want the power? The power comes after the Holy Spirit is given to you, as a gift. And ye shall be witnesses unto me unto both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So let's go to Acts the second chapter. And it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, which is 50 days after the, the Holy Convocation of Passover, Feast of Love and Bread, 50 days later is the Feast of Pentecost, in gathering or the Feast of First Fruits. Acts the second chapter. And when the day of Pentecost was come, fully come, they were all with one accord with one, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. So this is spiritual. Now when you look at, I want to ask the second chapter, not ask the second chapter, but... Um, second Ezra is the eighth chapter, Salakia, and twenty-first verse. It says, "Whose throne or power of the Most High is inestimable; it cannot be measured." I'm talking about the Most High, whose glory may not be comprehended. You can't comprehend His glory. Before whom the host of angels stand with trembling. So all the army of angels stand before the Most High with trembling. They trembling. Listen, this is why I'm here. Whose service is conversing in wind. That's why the Spirit of the Most High, as you see, it says in Acts 2 and 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. So his conversation is in wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse 3. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. Let's continue in the Apocrypha. Second Ezra 8. Just showing you how this goes all together. Second Ezra 8. And 22. Whose service is conversed in wind and fire. See? That's why you see wind and fire here. Which is the spirit of the Most High. Which is the Holy Spirit. The Comforter of the Spirit of Truth. You hear 
and see it right here. Whose service conversant in wind and fire, whose word is true and sayings constant, whose commandment is strong and ordinance fearful. See? That's the Most High. The spirit of the Most High, I might say. So this is what came, and you see it says, verse 2 of Acts, the second chapter, because they're going to send a comfort, just this comfort coming to the apostles from the Most High through Amashach Yavashach. From the Most High to Amashach Yavashach, to the Holy Spirit, to man. Listen. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing, excuse me, a rushing mighty wind. There's a conversation that you're going to have with the apostles. And it filled all the house where they were sitting, the wind. And there appeared upon them cloven tongues or languages like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. So wasn't no fire burning on them. That fire is talking about Jeremiah 23, 29. It's not my word like as a fire. See, his word is like a fire. Said the Most High, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. So, this is what the word of the Most High is coming as fire. It is fire, you see. Verse 4 in Acts, the second chapter. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues or other languages as the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, gave them utterance. Now, who is this? And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews. These are Israelites, because this is our holy convocation. And not all the nations. They don't do they apply this now? When they say that you gotta speak in tongues, you gotta be filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues, do they say that this is when it happened? On this particular holy day, the day of Pentecost? I don't think so. See, I'm just saying they're just using the Bible for their own purposes of bringing forth their nonsense. Because this is a, just to tell you who it was, it's a, and they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. See? That's when it came. Don't get it twisted. That's, this is what we got to look at. Look at um <coughs> excuse me. Let's see, because he said we gotta we gotta prove that the Holy Spirit gonna come in his name. So you know they were um they came from all these different lands. You read from uh Acts 2 and 9 down tell you all the different lands that they came from and they were mesmerized by how they were able to speak in their languages that they came from. That was the miracle that the Most High had them to speak with other languages. So then verse 12 it says, and they were all amazed this Acts the second chapter and were in doubt saying one to another what mean is this? What mean is this? Others mocking said these men are full of new wine. Come on. Full of new wine? I mean, how is wine? You drink some wine and all of a sudden they're going to give you another language to speak? Of somebody else? You gonna you drink wine. You don't know Spanish, but you drink some wine. Next thing you know, you're going to speak Spanish? Make that make sense. See, that's how ignorant Israel is, but they can be really out there, man. Just way, just over the top of their head, man. <laughs> Listen, others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. <laughs> But Peter, standing up with the leaven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. Listen to what I got to say, he said. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, saying it is but the third hour of the day. Say, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. 
And it shall come to pass in the last day, said the Most High, I will pour out my spirit, out of my spirit, upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. He's prophesying and showing what would happen, what was prophesied to happen. See, but see, you don't, you don't. All they can, all they can go by is what. You got to go by what Amashak Yahushai said and the fact of the, what was said through the prophets. I think he's going to Joel 2.28. Yeah, come. Joel 2.28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. That's what he's saying. So that's what he's saying. Is it happens? It's happening right here. And so, um, and continue on verse uh, twenty-nine. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit, and I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turn into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the most high and the was shy come and we see them blood moons they talk about happening right around the holy convocations a lot of wonders and signs are happening so now going back to Acts 2 um in verse 18 it says and on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the most high and the Mashiach of shall come just like we just read in Joel the same thing that's all he had to go by was the law and the prophets so When you look at um, once they had the whole struggle, I just want to show you how it's all in the name of the anointed Savior, as he said. Um, look at verse 36. Acts 2 36 says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that the most I have made that same of my shepherd, whom you crucified both. Lord and Mashiach, for the power and Mashiach. Listen, now when they were, when they heard this, they heard that the Most High has done this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What, we, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, ask for forgiveness of your sins, sincerely, and be baptized, every one of you, how? Huh? In the name of the Lord and Savior. By Hashem, Mashiach, Yahushai. For the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But you see how he told them to be baptized in the name of the Lord and Savior. Repent first. And be baptized in the name of the Lord and Savior. You won't see nowhere where you see anybody being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But you are being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit when you're baptized by Shama Mashiach Yahushua. Because he's in the Father, the Father's in him, and the Holy Spirit going to speak, going to confess of him. And he's going he gonna to give whatever he has to the Holy Spirit. So all three, and that, what he has is coming from the Most High. That's what he's telling you. Be baptized in the name of the Lord and Savior, of Mashiach Yahushua, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to, unto you. And the promise is only given to Israel. It's not given to everyone. I hope you know that. I went through it. Um, I went through that. Um, showing that. Um, that the promise is given to Israel. That's why I say you can't make it be anyone else. Just say, look. Uh, for the promise is unto you and to your children. And to all that are far off, that's those that are scattered, the foreigners, the 
the, the strangers that are Israelites, the uh, uncircumcised that are Israelites, and the Gentiles that are called Israelites too. You see? They are far off, even as many as Mashiach Yahushua power shall call. See? That's why you see uh, James 1 and 1 says, who is addressed to? That's the ones that are far off. James 1 and 1. James, a servant of the Most High, and of the power of Mashiach Yahushua, to, I mean, it's addressed to, it is only addressed to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greetings. Peter 1 and 1. Peter, an apostle of Mashiach Yahushua, to, I mean, it's addressed to, not to everyone, the strangers, which are the Israelites that are strangers, because he didn't know them. Yeah, Israelites, but you don't know them. That's a stranger. Don't get it twisted. That is a stranger scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Parthenia. Elect. There it is right there. Proving that it's only talking about the Israelites. Elect. Because the elect are the Israelites. According to the foreknowledge of the Most High, the Father, who's the father of who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. Through the sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of a Mashiach Yahushua, whose own blood was only shed for the children of Israel, for repentance and remission of sins of Israel in Acts 5.31. Grace unto you. Grace is only given to the Israelites. That's wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9. Wisdom of Solomon 4.15. Grace is given to the Israelites. Mercy is given only to the Israelites. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. See? So, that in itself let you know that it's talking to Israel. And, going back to uh, uh, Acts uh, to me Acts the second chapter and the 39 verses for the promise is unto you and to your children see and to all that are far off see so the promise is what he promised he promised um He promises he's gonna he, he promises a lot of things, but he promises he's gonna put us in our land. Look, go to um, Isaiah, the last book of Isaiah, Isaiah 66. Book it right there. Look, Isaiah 66 and No, no, 60, Salaki, 60. Not 66, but 60. 60. And. This is a promise. Uh, verse 15. 60 and 6, 15. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated. So that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, these other nations, and, and shalt suck the breast of kings, and thou shalt know that I, the Most High, am thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. That's a promise. For brass, you hear it? For brass, I will bring gold. And for iron, I will bring silver. And for wood, brass, and for stones, iron, I will also make thy officers peace. And thine exactors righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Wasting no destruction within thy borders. No more violence. No more destruction. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation. Powers and authority. That's salvation, y'all. And thy gates praise. Three gates. Four gates, excuse me. 
three tribes on each gate. Look at verse 21. Thy people also shall be all righteous. It's a promise. They shall inherit the land forever. It's a promise. We're going to inherit the land forever. Listen, the branch of my planting, he's going to promise us to receive the land that he's going to plant us on, the most high. He said, the work of my hands. That's a promise. That I may be glorified and the most I can be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand. You know, a little one gonna become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. I the most I will hasten in his time. That's a promise. That's a promise. Oh yeah. How loyal to his holy name. That's a promise to us, Israel. And that's what we're working toward. Um, look. Look at Jeremiah 3 and 18. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel. That's all 12 tribes. The northern tribes and the southern tribes. Southern tribes and the northern tribes. All 12 tribes. And they shall, excuse me, come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. See? That's a promise. It's not to everyone. But it's to us, the Israelites. And that's what we're working so hard to receive. If you can hear what he's saying. In many other scriptures, he, he promises us that we're going to go into the land of Israel. Look at uh, Job 30. And 18. I'll read verse 17 first. For I will restore health unto thee. And I will heal thee of thy wounds. Because he don't want that wound and heal. Said the most high. Because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion. This, these are the twelve tribes of Israel, whom no man seeketh after, because we at the bottom. But listen, thus said the Most High. Hear what the Most High say. Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, and have mercy on his dwelling places. And the city shall be built upon her own heap, and the palace shall remain after the manner thereof. How it's gonna be built? Isaiah 60 and 12. Isaiah 60 and 10. So like you. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. These other nations are gonna build up our walls. And their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee. That's why I say it was an outcast. Nobody came to us. And it's in the most highest wrath, he smote us. But in my favor have I had mercy on thee. See? Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and their, that their kings may be brought. The kings gonna be brought for the nation, the kingdom that will not serve thee, that don't want to serve us, shall perish. He's gonna, he gonna destroy them. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. See? So, that's the choice you have. Going back to uh, Jeremiah 30. Verse 18. Thus said the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. Behold, I will bring again the captivity of Jacob's tents, 
and have mercy on their dwelling places. And the city shall be built upon her own heaps. Just told you the other nations going to build up our cities. And the palace shall remain after the, re the manner thereof. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. We're going to really be doing a real thanksgiving. The real thanksgiving from the most high. And we're going to be happy. I mean, merry. Be joyful. And I will multiply them. That's what he said. A small one going to be a thousand. See? I'll bring forth a thousand. And they shall not be few. They ain't going to be few. It's going to have a lot of children. I will also glorify them. And they shall not be small. See? They're going to glorify us. We ain't going to be small. We're going to be huge. Their children also shall be as a time. This is a promise, y'all. Our children will be as a time. And their congregation shall be established before me. And I will punish all that oppress them. You hear that? All you that oppress us, you're going to be punished. I will punish all that oppress them. And their nobles shall be of themselves. That's what they're supposed to be now. The ones that we set over us will be of ourselves, of the Israelites. And their governor shall proceed from the midst of them from as an Israelite. And I will cause him to draw near, and he shall approach unto me. For who is this that engages his heart, his mind to approach unto me, said the Most High? And ye shall be my people. And I will be your power. Behold, the whirlwind of the both side goeth forth in the, with fury. And a Mashiach Galashah going forth with fury. That's them chariots. Like flying saucers. IFOs, identified flying objects. That's coming for the vengeance of the Most High. A continuing whirlwind. Means it's going to be continuing. Now I stop it. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. You hear that? Who's the wicked? Job 9.24 says the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. He who is the wicked cover the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? Unless I look. Mashiach of Shai said he coming to judge and make war, right? I see they covered his face up in this Bible. I got to keep showing it to you because I don't, a lot of y'all don't, y'all, they said picture worth a thousand words. There it is right there. The wicked cover the faces of the judges. There was a of the said his feet like the fine brass with the burning in a furnace. So it was very, very dark skinned man. They covered the faces of the judges there. There he is, grown man. He had blonde hair when he was little, but now he's got brown hair, brunette, from a blonde to a brunette. <laughs> However that goes, however that happened. But you see, they cover the face of the judges here. And the most important judge is the most high. And you open up this Bible, who they have there? A so-called white man. It ain't no Arab. It ain't no African. It ain't no East Indian. It's the so-called white man. Straight up. So, this is what he's saying. Verse 23. Behold, the whirlwind of the most high goeth forth with fury. A continual whirlwind, it shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. See? That's a promise too. <laughs> it's a future promise. The fierce anger of the most high while Mashiach of Shai shall not return until he have done it. And until he have performed the intents of his heart, of his mind. In the latter days, ye shall consider it. That's why I had to go into it. It's the last day we consider it. Oh yeah. So, that's part of what we were promised, you know. And look at Romans 8 and 26 because, you know, it's a time of Jacob's trouble. So, we got to look at, as we look at future prophecies, knowing it's going to happen, we still got to deal with making it there. Making it through all the times that we have, you know. So, look at Romans 8 and um uh, In 26. That's why I say it's very important that we have this gift of the Holy Spirit because it says, Romans 8 26, likewise, the Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, also help us our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. So we don't know all the time what we should pray for. 
but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. You hear that? The Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. We can't even utter it so sad. That's the gift of the Most High. The Holy Spirit that goes to the Most High with, through a Master of God, with utterings of groanings that we can't even utter. And he that searches the hearts or our minds knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of the Most High. So he's going to the Most High according to the will of the Most High. He's under instructions. He's under laws, statutes, commandments. He's under the, the rules and regulations of the Most High, which is the will of the Most High. He knows how we have to go to him with groanings that cannot be uttered. And here we are, mortal bodies, trying to be prideful. And the Spirit, you hear what it said? It's going to, to the Most High for our infirmities, for the things that's hurting us. Could be sickness, could be mental, could be uh, people that are against us, or peoples, or a lot of people that's against us. Tragedies that happen. Family members. All of this. The Holy Spirit is going to the most on our behalf. Looking after us. Verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Most High, to them who are the called according to His purpose. You see? That's why some are called according to the purpose of the Most High, and mortal men, mortal women, want to take them off of their purpose. That's the purpose of the Most High. You better watch out for that. Let nobody take you off your purpose. Some of you have been called. Not many are called, but few are chosen. So you got to maintain your purpose to be the chosen. And they say, many are called, but few are chosen. This ain't no, I'm in there, then I'm out of it, then I'll come back in and back and forth. No, that's what it says, revolve, we do it, revolve, you revolve, revolve and out. When you go out, the spirit going to leave you. It's a gift. You ain't going out, that gift still with you. You still, you still ain't rolling with the Holy Spirit. I don't care how you think you are. You already have guidelines that's already been laid out how it's got to be. A lot of you new Israelites coming in here trying to make it be something different. You better wake up. You better wake up. You better ask because you don't know. This is all formulated. It's all here formulated. It's already been formulated. It's just you were not there when the formula was being created. So therefore, you, a lot of you try and go against the grain and try and come with your own way. Do your thing. But whatever, don't use what it is that ancient men have brought forth then. Make it say something different. Break it down another way. You know, I've seen many men say everything that we taught was wrong, but then they use the same breakdowns as the same way that we all learned it. Because you can't change it. So if it's wrong, start all over again. Make it be something. Just come up with your own way of what it's the way, what it's what it means. You can't. You're gonna repeat something that we of the ancient ones, as you call us, or whatever the the old elders or whatever however you want to call us, have brought forth years ago. Years ago. You're still doing the same thing. Just nitpicking, nitpicking, trying to you just like you scoffers trying to find something that is, look look look. I'm so intelligent. You ain't intelligent. We know in part and prophesy in part, all of us. Mashiach Abishai got to come back and show us all the part, the whole part. Better humble yourself before the Most High. Come and visit you. That's whoever hear my voice and whoever don't want to adhere to humility. All you pride suckers, all you, you sinners, you're going to be put to death, period. Because you ain't bad as the Most High. 
That's who I'm exalting, the most high. He the one that's going to bring this to us, you know? And the Holy Spirit, you hear what it says? Look, think about it. All you, this the, all you prideful cats and women. Verse 26, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. You hear that? When you have the Holy Spirit, it helps your infirmities. This is a life. And I felt, I felt really crappy. I didn't want to teach tonight at all, period. I felt terrible. But I feel great. When I started going to the Spirit, it was the Holy Spirit, I mean, it's, it's a gift, y'all. But it's alive. It ain't dead, it's alive. And where you see, like it's telling you, it says, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray as we ought. You prayer warriors out there thinking you praying, you know what you're supposed to pray. You would have said, you don't know what you're supposed to pray as you ought to pray to the Most High. So when the last time you went to the throne of the Most High, it was before Him. I just read to your angels before Him trembling. So when is the last time you went to before the Most High in your fleshy body? You just have your own mind of how you think He is. You done made up your own mind. Because I say, well, God, your Bible should show me, show me the Most High. But what He's given us, you, you don't have no means to be able to show me then how is it that you know Him? That He know you. I know this. I read this. I'm going to read it to you again. Second Ezra is 8.21. Whose throne, his most highest power is inestimable. It cannot be measured. His power cannot be measured. Whose glory may not be comprehended. His glory may not be comprehended. Before whom the host, the armies of angels... Stand with trembling. You hear that? The angels stand with trembling. Now, how are you going to stand before the Most High? When we seen angels, we fainted. They had to pick us up. Hey, seen an angel bow down to him like it was the Most High. No, nah, no, nah, don't bow down to me. Bow down to the Most High. They trembling, seeing it. They don't bow down to me. Bow down to the most high. You see that angel standing before him trembling. And who are we as mortal men and women thinking that we going to stand before the most high? You, you done went to the throne of the most high. You better humble yourself and tell you that. <laughs> this is not something that you got to take lightly any way, shape, or form, people. You better understand. This is serious. I love this too. It says in verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of a Mashiach? Shall tribulation catch a lot of hell? Or distress? Or persecution? Or famine? You have enough, you don't have enough to eat? Or nakedness? No clothes, apparel, danger? Or sword? Modern day sword is the gun. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And you see that. Jacob's trouble. Within our nation right now. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You see? We more than conquerors. That's how we got to be thinking. But not with no pride. Pride is hateful before the Most High End, man. For I am persuaded that neither death, you would have said, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, 
nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Things that we can see right now are things that's going to happen to us after the first month, the 20th day of Esau's first month, the 20th day, from then on. <laughs> or before then. Nor things present, nor things to come. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of the Most High, which is in Bahashom, Mashiach, Kabashai, our power. Because we are Mashiach. We are the anointeds. We are the Messiahs. And the Messiah is the Most Highest. Now look at... Uh, Look at uh, Romans the eighth chapter. We'll start at verse one. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are by Shama Mashakabashai, that are in by Shama Mashakabashai, rolling. With the gift of the Most High, which comes in the name of the anointed Savior, right here, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. See? That just means you're not on a carnal mind, you think spiritually, which is on another level beyond just the law of the letter. That's why it says here, for the law of the spirit, see, is a law of the spirit of life in Bashama Mashiach Galvashan have made me free from the law of sin and death. See? That's through the Holy Spirit, through doing what's right, being obedient, so that you can roll in the spirit of Baal Shem, Mashiach, that had that spiritual power when you're obedient. So if you're obedient, then you're not dealing with the law because you're following the law. You understand? It, it might seem, you know, kind of hard to understand how people try and, you know, dissect this but it's really simple when you understand you are obedient being obedient to the laws of the most side now you roll in by some much outside with the gift of the Holy Spirit that's gonna take you to a higher level of spiritual power that's what it's talking about for the Lord the spirit of life in by some much outside have made me free from the law of sin and death, which is the law that Moses gave. See the sin and death, and that 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 death was what? You do this, you die. That's why we have mercy and grace. The law of sacrifice. We sacrifice animals for what? Our sins. And some sins brought about death. Some didn't. But still you sinned, therefore you had to do a sacrifice for your sin. But the Mashiach of Shah was the ultimate Lamb of the Most High that sacrificed his life for us, for we the children of Israel. Now, it says, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, Most High sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. So if you don't think that just because uh, he came through the woman that he didn't come into this world it said through sinful flesh, man and a woman, sinful flesh. And for sins, the sins of who? The children of Israel. Condemned sin in the flesh. He condemned sin in the flesh. So we're dealing with what? Sin. When you sin, what you do? You sacrifice an animal. So that's what he did. He was the ultimate sacrifice for the sin, which is a transgression of the Most High's laws. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. See, we ain't walking after the flesh, but after the spirit. That the Most High said He's gonna send through Mashiach Yahushai, the confess of Mashiach Yahushai, as He confessed of the Most High, which is the Spirit of the Most High, Spirit of the Most High, which we have. The only thing that was promised to us, and we just went when He came in Acts the second chapter. Now we. Some 2,000 some years later, we still, he's never said he'll say anything else but the gift of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. So here we are operating the same way as it's written here. 
For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. See? Either you're going to be carnal or you're going to be spiritual. That's so why you're always carnal and you must, you are, you are the world. And you had you in enmity, you had war with the Most High, and you the enemy of the Most High. Because that's all you think about is worldly, 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 worldly things. Everybody know about when Christmas going to be, but I bet you all know when the Holy Convocation is going to come that we have next. Off the top of your head, you should know that. You should know when the new moon is, is going to be. But see, we know whatever the so-called white man have his hell of days set up. Everybody's like they just got finished with thanks taking, thanks stealing, thanks murdering, thanks killing, whatever you want to call it. It ain't no thanksgiving though. We're going to have a real thanksgiving we just read about in the kingdom. How many people got in fights and just maybe killed today? For what? Good Friday? They call it? It's the day that they sold us on slave blocks. Slave auction. Auction us off for of slaves. Good Friday. That's where it began. That's where they got the products. We was the product. Now they got all the products. They just sell and win. On good, they call it Good Friday. Put it right in your face. And there's a be out there acting food like a fool. Now what you see doing that? Israelites. Got to crazy. Walking after the flesh. But they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But the, that, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. See? You're going to die. To be carnally minded, are you dealing with somebody that's just carnally minded? They're going to bring death around you. You're going to see it. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So you got the Holy Spirit. He said you're going to send my peace. I'm going to give it to you. Remember the world can't give you the peace he said he's going to give you in, in John 14, 27. Is life and peace. See? Because the carnal mind... Like it. But, uh, because the carnal mind is enmity against the most high for it is not subject to the law of the most high neither indeed can be that's why it's hard that's why uh, I must go to James 4 and 4 to show you how you being carnal minded or just worldly how 